Uh, my name is Joy Carpenter and I am from Indiana. I live just north of Indianapolis in Carmel, Indiana in the United States. Uh, my son has uh, L1 syndrome. Um, sometimes it's called L1 CAM, which is stands for the cell adhesion molecule. Um, I'm also a carrier of that. I did not learn I was a carrier until Jaden, my oldest son, was probably about two and a half years old. It took about a year and a half for them to locate the gene in his um, makeup. And then, but after they knew where to look, it took about two weeks for them to find that I was a carrier. For males, it's usually a very, very serious um, syndrome. Jaden at the time was the most mild they had ever seen. He, um, most of this, the kiddos with L1 struggle to walk, um, to function, and will need lifetime care. Jaden was not like that and is not like that. We did not know that at the time. We didn't know what his life would fully look like. He was, he had a lot of motor delays, uh, low muscle tone, some cognitive issues that we noticed with directions and spatial um, uh, memory and spatial things that as he's gotten older, he's learned kind of how to deal with. Um, he does not have abducted thumbs. Most of the kiddos with L1 do. Um, he has hydrocephalus, which uh, is, at, at first they thought it was congenital hydrocephalus, um, but then once they learned that he had L1, they realized it was a symptom of the syndrome. Technically, I should not have any symptoms. However, my sister also carries the gene and we have um, noticed that we have a lot of um, muscle issues, um, some pain issues, and just kind of some odd things that we wonder. I wonder if this could be related to this in any way. Um, my sister and I both have stenosis of the spine, spinal stenosis, which is typical when you get older, but we had it when we were younger. And that is also something my son has. So it has been in our mind, we wonder if this could be affecting us in some way. After we knew my son had hydrocephalus, we were thinking about having a second child and we saw a genetic counselor and she was actually the one that recommended that we be tested for L1. Um, she said it's all research based. It was all brand new. Um, so everything was free at the time. She did not think that, that he was affected with L1 because he didn't have all of the symptoms. And we saw several geneticists who didn't think that was what he would have. Um, it was new enough that like his neurosurgeon had never heard of it. Um, but after waiting, we waited for a very long time to get the results. And most people were telling us that we didn't, probably it wasn't genetic. So we went ahead and had our second son. So at the time we didn't know it was genetic until after he was already born. But once we learned that I was a carrier, my husband and I both felt like we had been given this information at the right time and that we needed to use that information to make our decision. And so we decided that we wouldn't pursue any natural um, biological children at that point. Um, knowing how severe the syndrome is um, and how difficult it would be on our family and on, on, on the child as well. Um, so we knew we had a couple options. We could be done. We already had two children. Um, we could try uh, uh, I don't remember all of the different things we could do, but they were, you know, where we could examine my egg to see which, which gene or which 
X chromosome it had and if it had the good one or the bad one. Um, if it is because it was X linked, I mean, there was even something like spin the sperm and you'll be more likely to have a girl. So we could do that. We talked about embryo adoption, um, but just adoption in and of itself was always at the top of our list. I did not love being pregnant. I did not feel the need to have biological children. I didn't, um, I didn't see, I didn't have any problems going ahead with adoption. I had felt all along that I wanted to adopt. Even as a young child, I really thought I would end up adopting children. Um, so when it came time that we needed to make a decision, we were very open to adoption. My sister had just adopted a child from Thailand. And so it was just fresh. She had just been through the just been through it. So we felt comfortable going that way. Um, so we looked into a couple of different adoption agencies and a couple of different countries because we already had two boys. We thought we would adopt a girl. And at that point internationally, the only way to really the only country that was uh, adopting out a lot of girls was China. It was moving very fast. But by the time we got all of our paperwork in, that was a really big slowdown. So um, that it was a hard decision in the fact that we had to decide to have more or to grow our family. It wasn't a hard decision deciding how we would grow our family. The biggest decision for my husband and I was, are we just done at these two that we already have, or do we want to grow our family? When we decided we wanted to grow our family, the only option we really considered very much was the adoption option. And, um, but we knew that there were other options out there. My son, Jaden, is engaged. And he, um, if he decides to start a family, we know that he would pass on his gene to his daughter if he has a daughter. Um, mm. But he won't really be faced with some of these um, with the decisions, but that daughter, so my granddaughter would, mm -hmm. um, but I just know there are so many options, either medically to have your own biological child or through adoption. Our first adoption was fairly easy. I mean, it, didn't change our family very much any more than just adding a third child would. Um, but our fourth adoption was very tough. We adopted a five and a half year old who was profoundly deaf. So she didn't have any language skills and she, her personality honestly was just very different than the rest of us. It was hard, I would say for five years. It was just really hard. So honestly, I'm glad I can't go back and tell myself because I think I would say, don't do it. It's really hard and it did really affect our family. However, I can see myself now on the other side of it. She's been with us for 12 years now. So we've moved past those five really, really hard years and I wouldn't change anything. I guess I would just tell myself, it's gonna change you, it's gonna change your family, it's gonna change your dynamics and it's gonna be really hard. And I look back on those five years and I look at those five years that my boys were growing up and that Sarah was around and how Noel, the, young, the one we adopted last, how difficult it was for me to be a mother during those times. So that's what I would say. It was much, much harder than we thought it would be. I would tell myself that it does get better, that um, I remember, so during those, probably the first year, my husband would just keep telling me, God is sovereign. This is his plan. This is not a mistake. And like, that's all I could think of during that time. So I would just remind myself 
of those things, even though I didn't necessarily cling to them the way I should have those first few years to just know it is. I can't imagine our life differently than having those two girls with us or having our two boys. And I'm so glad we have this family of four, even though they drive each other crazy and drive us crazy. I wouldn't change it. So even though it's hard, you'll get through it.